Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Reseller Information Network. Today we are joined by some special guests, um, some special guests, and uh, I had to wait for him to get back in camera. <laughs> if you guys know Leroy, he had to go get a snack or something. <laughs> yeah. Leroy is back with us today, man. The comeback. Yeah, Leroy is with us. Commonwealth Picker, Kevin's hanging out with us today. Uh, we're going to be talking about some exciting news about do you have a problem sourcing? Is it something that you're like, man, you know what? I can never find the stuff that you're looking, that you guys are talking about, the things that you're finding. My thrift store is terrible. My yard sales are non-existent. We got a solution for you. We're going to be talking about it today. So we're going to go ahead and, and jump into some things. But before we do, we did want to read a couple of comments we had on the last couple of shows. We uh, do appreciate you guys who come in and make those comments in order that we can improve on what we're doing. But also, uh, Sernak, I will tell you, we got a little a little feedback on the phone thing. I guess there's some people that are afraid of the phone to talk to somebody on the phone. Uh, Rad Relic says, I've never been, <clears throat> never been man. Okay. <laughs> I just want to call <laughs> someone on the phone, LOL. I'm a let me send a message kind of guy. So, you know, I know Sarnak has talked about, like, sometimes you can get your, your buyer on the phone and maybe resolve some of those issues that come along. But uh, we heard from our man, Shapert Vintage, here. It says, on our earlier episode, Sarnak gave the same advice to send payment to a non-paying buyer. I tried it a few times, and one lady blew me blew up at me saying it was the rudest thing a seller has ever said to her and how dare I be condescending like that it, laugh out loud. It was a long message and she said she wouldn't be paying. I think I shared the message in a live stream, but it was a long, very long time ago. Thanks for the funny memories and great content guys. And shout out to our boy, Walter Tilton. He just says, Hey, ho, Walter, man, huge supporter of the channel, has gifted so many memberships to all you guys uh, that are out there. So, guys, if you have been gifted a membership, man, shout out Walter Tilton. Uh, he has. Uh, so How come I wasn't on that list? I don't know. It does it randomly. So, I guess it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> that happened. Speaking of that, we're going to let Tim take some deep breaths, kind of get geared up for this thing. Because, man, we, we have got a load of you guys as channel members now. And if you want to be a part of that channel membership, uh, all you got to do is hit the join button down below. We have a couple of different tiers. and uh, So this isn't a secret episode? I thought this was, you told me to come on a secret episode. This yeah. is like the real deal? You're trying to pump the membership? Oh, all real right. deal. Real all deal. Right. We're, we're trying to step <laughs> up to the big boy plate. but <laughs> All right, Tim, you ready? Yeah. So wait, this is going to go in two scrolls? Two scrolls. <laughs> oh, all right, let's do it. All right, let's go. We want to give a big thank you to our channel members. AZ Katsu, Simply, Shenanigan, Shanna, Diane, Matthew, our very own Blood, Sweat, and Cell, Trash, Cat, Rescue, New England, Betty Boo, Joe Deals, Old School Picker, Vintage Sport Place, Charity, Terrific Vines, Kathleen, The Fernand Way Flipper, Ohio Pickers, Annette, and Frank, Rudely Retro, Absolute Finds, Des Hardy, Heather Pedler, James Steinbreaker, Old Pass, High Plains Flipper, Sir Walter Tilton, Black Sheep Society, Death Pile Picker, Mark Rollins, Tracer J's Trading, Aaron Vaughn, Central Iowa Picker, Woof 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 Wiggle Room 9, Buck Mountain Barn, Pin Joe Picker, Trash to Cash Podcast, Mayberry Picker, Bluegrass Picker, Miss All Right with Me, Kent Daigle, Miss Trady Post Picker, Jasmine, One Man's Trash, Trashy Panda, Savage PG, Lindsay Diane, Victor Echo Coins, CK Postcards, Sentimental Connection, Silver Hair Stacker, Amy Elrod, Wes Smith, and on to the next list. Here's 
Lost your audio on the last one. Lil Miss Q, my three Camera Lynn. Thank you so much, Alright. Wait, what happened? Did you guys not hear me? <laughs> we heard it just to the very end. It it cut off a couple. Oh, okay. Man, you hear is, me now. y'all are going to have to do something else. That's getting out of control. There's a lot of good people in there. And then there's Death Pile. You might have to hire like the old school micro machines guy. The yeah. fastest talker guy to do that. The fastest talker. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's like value for your money over here. Trash to cash. They don't, I guess Carrie does a little, only for the high tier stuff. So you have to have different tiers, right. like something. That's a lot of good old, there's some OGers in there. I like right. most of them, except for that Kent Daigle guy. I remember him. <laughs> Walter Tilton has Death gifted Picker. 20 memberships out. Walter Jeez. Hill. Shout out, Walter Tilton. Thank Sir, you. did he buy one of them Harry Tornado things? No, I just call him Sir because oh. I feel like Walter Tilton's is the name of somebody who would be knighted. <laughs> hey, I'm only here because Leroy's here, by the way. I heard it was his comeback. I'm only here because like, Kevin's hey. here. If no, Kevin well, has to do, I got stuff to do. I'm only here so I don't get fined. <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah, funny. Good. Very good. Hey, guys, well, thank you all for having me on, man. Yeah, I was going to say, Kevin, if you want to share for a second, I know we're going to dive into what you got going on and uh, the reason you're here. And, you know, I know part of the reason is Leroy had got started on district and then he's had to take a break. And uh, he was he was here on one stop shop and it kind of it stressed him out. So he's like, guys, I, I, I'm sorry, I got to take a break for months. Uh, but <laughs> he's back then. <laughs> he's, he's back, back the so terminator cool. the terminator yeah. he's back i'm glad he's here well look thanks for having me i'm i don't do you know i don't do these things very often i, I i've done one with you guys i think or you yeah. did an interview with me a long time ago eric but that was cool and i better be what beating all the other guests so but anyway thanks for for having me on i did want to talk about something and i wanted to come right to the the folks that i trust and and yap about it a little bit and get some thoughts and advice because be, i'll just be really honest on this one here not that i'm not honest i guess but on the podcast we don't always tell the truth you know meaning dave and carrie so i i am i'm gonna i've, I've been him and Hall, and i've been talking to you guys about this um behind the scenes a little bit everybody but leroy i've been giving him a space but Anyway, and I'm glad to see it, but I am going to, we're going to open a new marketplace and this one's going to be very different. This one's going to be a, um, a, a reseller to reseller marketplace. And um, to be honest, I'm a little worried about it because it's going to be a wholesale marketplace on district. And of course you guys have one stop shop. So if you're listening for the first time, go check out their district one stop shop. And then we have dibbed it. Of course, we got lots of people coming in and out and the dogs and all kinds of stuff here. So in case it gets a little noisy, but I just wanted to introduce the concept and I actually came here first. This is the first announcement of it. Really, I haven't even done it on my own channel. It hasn't come out yet. It is not even live on district yet, although you can find it. It's shopcommons.net. And I came here because of all those names you scrolled and all the people who listen to you guys show they're people that are that are good resellers and, and good folks and I wanted to kind of present this first get their feedback for one but also I'm looking for people that I could trust to be sellers on this site as we experiment with it and try to make wholesale um, something that can be trusted and transparent and with names that you can see and contact and and to have some clarity with it because i don't try i don't know about you guys have you dealt i don't i don't think any of you ever source have ever sourced wholesale have you have any no, of you sourced only, wholesale? only in person I, I i've not and you know like i've only done it in person it's like you said i think it, the big thing is is the trust the trust issue you know like i if i really wanted to source wholesale i can just go to this guy up here Mr. yeah Sherlock, you know what i'm saying but like i, I i've done I, during the the pandemic was one point where you really I think there was a lot of wholesale sourcing going on because of the pandemic it became a, a bit difficult to source um, but it, it's tricky and I, I think that you know with what Kevin's doing is super important because and Allen district because district is so much a community-based place you know and 
there's no better way to trust who you're buying from in wholesale than a place that's community oriented. And I think that that's one of the big things about district as a whole, whether it's Dib Did or One Stop Shop or any of the other districts that some of us sell on. Uh, community is super important. So for me, and then like, you know, there's so many scammers out there in the world, whether it's mystery boxes or stuff like that, where it's like, you know, to have something that's just straight to the point is it, super important, I think, especially um, in today's, you know, world of reselling. Yeah. So, and I've been, I guess technically now that you say that, I've done some wholesale stuff that I bought. I bought from Chernock before two or three times and it's deals of the day and, and other things. I've <laughs> called him up before and said, hey, I'm getting low on inventory, which doesn't happen very often to me, but I called him up and he's like, oh, here you go. <laughs> he sold me a box. I think you've done that a few times, T-shirts and the, the the pearl snaps and stuff like that. And so I guess I've done a little bit of it and I've done some in person, but <clears throat> I was thinking about this idea for myself and I was thinking about it in a, in a little bit of a different way. And Tim, I know you have kind of niched, not niched down, but you've really narrowed down the items that you're picking. And Leroy, of course, you've done that years ago. And... <clears throat> So my thought was when I look at these five bins of shoes and every time I sell a pair of shoes, I say, I hate these shoes. I just can't stand them. And every time I say that on the channel, somebody says, I'll buy all your shoes. And I got one person in New York, they're in the Bronx and they're like, dude, I can't find shoes up here. I love selling shoes. I'll buy every shoe you got. Just give me the price. And I'm like, hmm, that sounds really tempting. And when I did a, di speaking of district, I did a Dibdit show where I sold consoles. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I, I was it. selling consoles. I hate consoles. Hate it. it. Takes so much time. I'm so dumb. I can't figure out the cords and different systems. <laughs> Unless it's like Atari or NES, I'm lost. And I'm just like, man, I'll 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 claw out the good games and stuff and then I'll sell off pieces and whatever. And then I'm left with the consoles and I'm like, what am I gonna do? So I started selling these on Dibdit. And they did well. They did okay as one offs. <clears throat> but both but I did two separate or maybe three separate shows, and both times I had people contact me and say, dude, just save yourself the trouble. Put it all in a box and give me the price and ship it to me. I'm like, man, that's not a terrible idea. So I've, I've kind of done that. I hate comic books. I hate records. I, it's, I, I'm like, man, I buy all this stuff, and it sits there. I'm like, I'm going to do this for me. I'm going to alleviate the stuff I can't stand that I, that, that I know has value. But it has value. It's like glass, right? And I'm not doing glass this way because I ain't breaking a ton of glass in a big old box. But it's I would do more glass if I knew more. The no, more I know, the better off I am. But do I really? Is it really worth my time to go through the learning process that takes years? Obviously, Tim. And is it worth my time to do that? I put that work in. You guys, when you started doing hats when i started doing videos i would barely ever pick up a hat turn awkward and play. dude you're an idiot and it's like why buy did you buy all. that hat? I remember I'm that like, buy like, them I'm, all <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i don't know dude so i've put in the work in some of those categories and i've learned to love them but i don't think i'm ever gonna love comic books as much money as there is in it i don't think i'm ever gonna love even coins well there's a lot of money I don't know coins and I'm not sitting there looking up all these coins and doing that work. I like to do what I like to do. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this and I'm going to set up this marketplace. And I talked to the district boys and I'm like, this will just be me selling on there. And then I started to think and I started to think of Chernock and I started because I saw your deal of the day over on One Stop Shop. And I saw I'm like, man. And so I put this thing out there. I'm filibustering already here. Sorry. Um, but let me let me finish it and then I'll get you guys reaction to it. So I when I took Jess on as an employee, one, her job is to take care of the, the live selling along with Bubba's girlfriend and, and they do all the live selling, but they each have other jobs too. Um, mostly Bubba's fiance with um, social media stuff and emails and ad stuff and all this stuff that I can't keep up with. And then the other thing for Jess was I get offers all the time to buy out massive collections or houses or whatever. I'm like, I, it's just not me. It's not what I like to do. But I said, that's going to be Jess's job. And I put, I said, Jess.com, I'll pick her gmail.com. And we got a flood of messages coming. There are a lot of people who have way too much, like this guy over here, this guy right here. And <laughs> it, 
it can hamper your actual business sometimes. And I'm like, man. And so when we did that, I had three local people like, hey, do consignment with me or, or I'll sell you everything. And I'm like, I don't have the capacity for this. I said, I'll tell you what I will do is I'll, I'll try to set up a marketplace where you can do this if, and the if's what I want to talk about in a little bit. But so far, what do you think? Yes, Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you off. It's my first time here in a long time. So, you know, I, I'm good at cutting people off. I got a few things to say. I've been away for a while. I can be long-winded. I won't be as long-winded as Kevin. Oh, I just know people are happy to see you. Kevin, first, first of all, Kevin, brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, that's brilliant, a brilliant, brilliant from the bottom of my heart. Let me tell you a few things, okay? A lot of people don't realize that eBay is not only what you see on YouTube, okay? eBay and, and Macari and all these different platforms, there's billions of sellers, okay? It's not just what you, the it's not just the ten percent that you see on YouTube. Eric knows, Sernak knows, um, um, Kevin knows. There are people that live in. Scooby Doo, Mississippi. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that, that go to the post office. There's darn they go, kids. They they go to the post office twice a week because it's so far away, and they will buy whatever they can in bulk because they don't have a thrift store. They can't get. There's old people that can't get to a thrift store, but they still need the the, the money to subsidize. So by you doing this, this is brilliant because there's so many people that, that I would say 50% of the people that resell are, are live in a place where they can't just go down the street to 10 thrift stores. Okay, yeah. we hear of a few of them, but there's a ton of people. That, thrift deserts, I think they call them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so by you doing that, I remember when I put on my wrapping paper and Eric and all these guys remember – I brought it. I brought it from the place that I got it. I was showing a couple. Of, I was showing these guys. I had two people message me. I want five rolls or three rolls mm. now, because and they were taking the wrapping paper and cutting it in pieces and selling it on <laughs> on where the platform they're on and made and, and made it on the money. Yeah. But um, I think it's brilliant. I'm sorry to cut you off. Sorry to cut me off. You somebody better cut me off. I talked the whole time. Last time I was in here, I was like watching. Like, a lot of people don't realize that there's a ton of people. And I you know what? My first time back in a long time in the chat. I want to know if you know anybody or if you're one of those people that live pretty far away from places to thrift and you have to go if you if you have to go 20 miles out of your way. To go thrift, please put it in the chat. Well, I'd Scooby Doo, Mississippi sounds like a great place. To I was just gonna say, like, if there's one place I think I want to try out, it might be Scooby Doo, Mississippi. Mystery <laughs> van not included. A lot better than the Bronx or DC. Yeah, yeah. Right? I, I was thinking, Kevin. Like, I, I know we've been talking about this for a little while, and you know, for me, I've always run picker auctions, like where I would just throw everything on the table. The more, the merrier and let people buy. And that's the comments I, I would always get. It's like, man, I made so much money off that. I'm always like, tag me on Instagram. Like if you if well, you sell something more, like tag me on in Instagram. But one of the things I was thinking about is, okay, so if you're that person that you're like, man, I feel like I could do this, that I can do this for a living. Like I can take the leap to increase my business. Like, because you're talking about people that don't have uh, enough access to things. Like I think about when I, when I first started doing the thrift store run, like here we have seven thrift stores. That's what we have in a day's time. If I went to every one of those thrift stores, I might have on a good day, 10 items on a good day, like seven stores, 10 items. Like, I can tell you, if you're trying to make money at this and make it like something that you pay your bills with, 10 items a day ain't going to get you there. <laughs> like, yeah. And, and, and you spent half your day. Like for me, that's half my day for 10 items that I might sell one or two. 
So if you have the opportunity to say, you know what, I can even supplement, not saying you don't have to thrift anymore, but you could supplement your sourcing by yeah. getting it delivered to your door. Well, and you're right. Food. So, so uh, this idea came to me and immediately I had fears. So I want to just address them and, and tell you where I'm at. But, you know, watching you do that, and that was a little different because I'm really looking for like items, not like right. everything in a box, but it's the same idea. And watching Chernock do it, and I know you do this privately too, and watching some, some that really got me was watching Dave on Dibbed It when one day he was just selling, you know how Dave just does crazy things out of the blue sometimes? He's sitting there and he sees this box of Legos over there that he has to list, and he's like, eh, let's just put this up for auction right now. I'm like, oh my gosh, it was Harry Potter Lego. There was tons of it. There's like $400 worth of them sitting there. I don't know how much it was, but a lot. He's like, I paid 40 bucks for this. I'll put it up for 20 bucks or 40 bucks or something. And I'm like, okay, this is over on Dibbit. And people are bidding like crazy on it because there was, you know, he ended up selling for 120 and there's probably $400 worth of stuff in there. And he was happy. Please just punch. You don't have to deal with it. He's got so much stuff. So there are people in situations where they have a plethora of stuff, way too much. There are aux people who buy storage auctions who just, they can't process everything. And then there are people that I get messages from, I just can't source anymore. Thrift store is just too much money and whatever. I'm like, huh, yep. we got to figure out a way to get these people together. But I'm just definitely afraid of, you know, Rockstar Flipper doing a, an expose on me and saying, oh, look, you know, this, they bought this thing from uh, shopcommons.net and it wasn't worth the money. So that's why I'm here. Because I got to have people that you can vet to somebody that you can trust. I want people to sell at like max 30% of eBay value. And there's not a lot of people that that model works for, right? And I've got a couple listings over there now that I'm like, okay, I don't want to dig through and find the actual value, but I know enough to know that this thing is well worth the price that I'm putting on it for sure. And district provides the opportunity to ship cheaper and yeah. it's also provided the opportunity for me to say, hey, at least for the first 100 sellers we have over there in 2025, and it may be 50, I haven't quite, I want to make sure that the people are the right people who can bring multiple things. It's not like, hey, I got this pile of records, but next year I'm going to have nothing. Um, I want them to be people that can consistently bring good stuff to the table at a decent price and that are open to be communicated with, even if it's shipping, right? If somebody in California wants it versus somebody... Hey, you got your listed shipping price on there, but if they're in West Virginia and I'm in Virginia, you know, send me a message. Maybe we can work something out to do the actual shipping and try to keep these costs low to make this thing functionable. And, and I want to, I, I just think it's, there's so many scammy places out there. I think I can pull this off if the right people join me with it as buyers and sellers, and we can serve both parts of the community within the community and you know you know this whatnot's a different animal dibbed it's a different or district's a different animal when you're trying to sell one-offs and all these reseller creators bring their audience over but they're a bunch of resellers resellers selling one-offs to resellers is, is a lot of times they better be a collector they better be you know that or it's just being nice and charity i'm like my audience are resellers your audience are resellers you know how can we set up a marketplace buy resellers for resellers and make it serve both of them and i after thinking about it talking to you guys about it, i think i think i can pull this off i hope i can pull this off well for, this is for me the one thing because i know i want to hear what sernock got to say obviously because sernock deals with more wholesale than, than i think all of us pretty much right so for me i think when you're looking at districts that as a whole, right? The the tools that we have at our disposal on district are so you know more advanced and user friendly than almost every other platform, right? So you know if you do lives on there, that's we can do lives on there. The videos and the listings for the wholesale lots is going to make people feel a lot more comfortable, you know, because they're going to be able to see every item. It, it, it's a lot of times with wholesale, it's like you're like zooming in and you're like, I don't know, like that, that bill on that hat looks broken. And then so you get a little weary, right? <laughs> or mystery that, boxes. Yeah, mystery boxes. You don't have to worry about that. And then I, I think you, you mentioned the shipping. The shipping with progressive shipping also 
makes things a completely different ball game. You can always refund shipping overages. Auctions, if you want to do auctions, I mean, static listings, there, there's so many different options on, on district. I think that that's important to, for people to understand. But as far as the wholesale in general, it's like, even as a as a seller, because you know we it's easy to look at it from a buyer because people need inventory, we can give it to them. But even as a seller, right? Somebody who all of us who are full time resellers, when I see an opportunity to buy three hundred comic books, right? Generally, I'm like, uh, I don't, <laughs> don't want to sit there and list mm-hmm. three hundred comic mm-hmm. books, right? But like now, I have an opportunity where I'm like, okay, I can buy those three hundred comic books and I can list them in three, four, five different lots on the, you know, on this platform now and get them into the hands of the people that want to list them individually. And then if as a buyer, it's like, you know, sometimes, especially with like sports cards, like it takes so much time for me to source individual cards on eBay, right? To get 20 cards in the mail, it might take me five days of like 10 hours right. checking every eBay auction. But now I can maybe find somebody who wants to sell an entire collection of cards. Like me. Because I can't yeah. tell you how many times I pass up giant collections of cards. And a lot of it's not worth it, right? But there's certainly some stuff in there that's worth it. And I had one the other day. And if I had the option to double my money in an hour versus quadruple my money in 25 hours in a product I don't like, I'm going to take the double up and move on to what I like. That's the way I think of it. But, you know. I feel feel like this is probably about 11 months too late for for Tim because he had an opportunity to buy some small engine parts. Oh, God. Here we go. (laughs) Oh, I knew gonna, that was going to slide its way into Listen, this episode at some point. Leroy, that's a great idea. I didn't think about that before we start. You started talking earlier. I'm like, Leroy's a tool guy, and I started thinking, man, I don't buy tools because I don't know what the heck I'm doing, right? But uh, you know, I could buy a big lot, and tools are a little heavy depending on what they are. But I, I could see that being something. But here's the other thing, Leroy. Think about this: you get in there, and you could get in the chat as a buyer and say, Hey, I'm a buyer of X. Does anybody have it? Yeah. In search I want to buy a lot of it. In search yeah. of this. And, and, so. and that's, that's very, that's very smart. And that's one of my, one of my excuses. I'm not going to say reasons. I'm going to make an, I'm going to say it's an excuse. One of my excuses with some of the different platforms and so on separate is because I'm a tool parts, hardware guy. And Right now in society, if you need that, you're not gonna go buy that from from Instagram, um, from YouTube, or from eBay. You're gonna just go to Home Depot and you're gonna buy it. So I I have a little bit. Of, I, I'm afraid. I'm Tool not, district coming soon. No. <laughs> <laughs> He did, he does have a listing. He did have a listing. I don't know if it's still there or not. I had a couple. I took them though. Hey, well, we haven't talked to Chair Dog, and he's like, "This is the guy." He I raised his hand like three times, but I, I he's been there by now. You just got to interrupt when we have this. <laughs> well, listen, it's it, it, it's okay. My my thing with the wholesaling is like, and, and and I know where Kevin sees it from, like things that happened in the past. With other Did guys. I piss off Leroy? Did no. he just leave? No, no, no. no. Okay, he, all right. But I do think a lot of a lot of uh, people, like maybe it's like you know some YouTubers back in the day, with their like mystery boxes. I, I think you can upset your people really fast with mystery boxes. No doubt. Because at first, a lot of people were like, "Oh man, mystery boxes! Boom, boom! I'm gonna hook these people up," and then they get lazy, and it starts. Hey, you know what? Just throw that throw that stuff in the box and ship it out. You know. Where, whereas I think, you know, kind of, you know, the vision we're looking at is yes, videos, pictures, description. Hey, this is, this is what communication getting communication. Yeah. you got a question about, you know, anything in the listing. Hey, boom, I got some questions before I buy this, 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 and this, and this, where, whereas, you know, buying a mystery box, I've, I've known, I haven't done it before, but I've known. There's, you know, vintage wholesalers that'll be like, oh, man, buy a bundle from me. It's all mm-hmm. one of my buddies. He, he bought a big, like, 400-pound lot of just crew neck sweatshirts. And mm-hmm. it, it was, like, vintage. 
It was it says like, like vintage and sports, eighties and nineties. Dude, he was getting <laughs> just like literally ninety percent like Walmart, Target, like mm-hmm. nothing Walmart. vintage. Like yeah, yeah, you have Mickey Mouse on a sweatshirt, but it's a it's a printed tag. It's a, you know, and and he spent up for this and and it was kind of like that's what he got for his wholesale, and he was really disappointed. To whereas, you know, I wish I could have been, you know, and, and he wholesales for me now because he can, you know, come over and just be like, all right, I want this, this, mm-hmm. this, 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 this. Mm-hmm. and I know you're gonna give me if I buy a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. I know the more I buy, the cheaper everything gets. You know, right? Um, so, and that's that's where I think, uh, you know, some people are maybe be like, ooh. Uh, I don't know about the wholesaling because they've had bad experiences in the past, but I think with the vision moving forward that we're really going to be able to, you know, provide some really cool products for people because they're going to see, Hey, it ain't going to be, you know, like when I do, Hey, here's 50 hats. You're going to see every single hat. So you can already go, all right, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Wow. Five mm-hmm. hats out of that 50 is going to make my money back. Mm-hmm. Well, I might even double it, you know, with five hats. So it, it's something like that. I think it's a lot better. Yep. Than doing and it can go, that. it can go specifically to the people that are good at that stuff. Right. You could send me a box of shoes and I could manage to figure out a way to lose money on it. Right. Cause I'm not going to claim you guys have the great pictures. That's why I don't sell shoes. I don't promote I don't take good pictures for shoes. It's highly competitive and I don't want to be highly competitive in those, in those categories. And so it, it could go to the specialists, the people that niche down, they could, I know a pipe guy, right? And I had a chance to buy out a pipe lot and I didn't, I picked it. I picked six, eight paid up a little bit for him, but the guy had 200 pipes. I probably would have made just as much money or more buying all the pipes, putting a, doing a little video, showing them. And, and the guy who knows pipes could have bought all the pipes. So I think you're right. And Chernock, it reminds me of something else says, because I trust you, all these people who watch trust you and stuff. Do you know how in district and Eric, you've set these up and Tim works on one stop shop all the time to make it perfect. Cause he's that kind of perfectionist kind of guy, you know? If your delete if your listing got deleted, it was Tim, by the way. So, um, you know how they have lines, they have categories. Like on the homepage, it appears like on ours on Dibdi. I always have like I love the '80s near the top. Of course, I push up the Commonwealth Picker one, so you can make categories for sellers as well. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, if there's a really trusted person who's bringing good merchandise, I I could have a Chernox connection line and you could go there and like i'm buying from chernock or if you've had a good experience with these five so you just you you go and buy for them and you test the other folks out and and that's one way to police it and the communication is always there and you can post hey i'm looking for x y or z but i know you guys and i know how eric thinks too because eric's he likes to pick those high dollar things and just he just he don't care he's made his money he wants to wants to get rid of everything else that's the way I'm thinking more and more about my business. I never want to niche down. It's like a Commonwealth picker niche, right? It's like the stuff I like, but I like a lot of stuff. I want to eliminate the five or six categories that I don't want to deal with. And I still want to be able to pick them. And oh. Hold on a second. Just a minute. Let me change my setting here. Dave will laugh at me. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that I was thinking about too, that. You know, while while you were talking, even about that, I I'll just tell you, and we've given this advice before. Live selling is a different animal. If you're selling live, are you selling uh, static? And, and kind of the way this thing is looking as well, I'll just tell you, it ain't for everybody to sell. It ain't because unless you can buy a ones and twos guy, you can't do a wholesale box. I'm just telling you, you can't. Yep. You're not going to be able to mm-hmm. come up with enough items cheap enough to where it's sustainable for you. Like, so I mean, I understand like like you've said about limiting sellers to be to people you can trust and people have a track record. But also, I mean, guys, I know for me, like when I first got on whatnot, I got brought on board in a category that I could not sustain. Mm-hmm. Action figures. They're like, dude, how many times do you roll up on a huge amount of 80s action figures? It just don't happen. Like, I mean, you don't, 
uh, once in a blue moon, I'll hit something like that. Mr. Jimmy. Yeah. So, I mean, like that, those are kind of things that you have to think about as well. Like if you're going to sell wholesale at 25, 30% of retail, like, dude, you, you can't be going to the thrift store buying one sweater at $20 and one sweater at 25 <laughs> and one at 15. Hey, I'm going to put together a box guys, 15 bucks and then get mad at the platform because you're not making yeah. any money. Right. Well, we're so. trying to figure out a way I, and it's difficult to come up with rules because I uh, initially, and I talked to Turner about this, is I want the items to be visible. So that's easy online, right? You're live and yeah. it's like, okay, I got 200 comic books here. Here's all 200 of them. I'm going to show them to you one at a time. Right. Um, but that's hard in a, you know, a one minute video, two minute video. So I'm trying to figure out a way how it's like visible. Um, but maybe not like me going through 300 and, and showing you the corners, right? And it needs to be cheap enough. And same thing with you, Sherlock, right? If you're going to do pearl snap shirts, I don't need you to show every hem and whatever. And so there's going to be a little bit of, mm -hmm. I don't want to say mystery, but it's going to be like, you've got to be able to see enough to know that this is well worth your time. And so we're trying to figure that stuff out. But the communication part is the easy one, right? If you don't see everything that you need to see, send them a message. It's right there. Jesus. Sorry. That's all right. Somebody's here. I think your mic went to your computer or your phone and not your headphones now. And, and the thing is, I, I, think, I think it's going to be good for, like, I think it's really, I think this is really going to be good for, like buyers you know what i'm yeah. saying this is gonna this is going to give buyers or people that are in those thrifting <laughs> deserts an opportunity to grab some stuff because here's the thing i can pick up stuff every single day mm -hmm. if i want to you know mm -hmm. but you, know, you limit yourself i can't because you know i'm gonna like all right listing and this and that you know but if mm -hmm. i if i have people that are like yo you know, I, I want I want Converse and Van shoes. All right, I got you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, I got you. How many you want? 10, 20 of them? Well, think about this. Oh, since you know. he mentioned what, since he mentioned what not, sure not. Well, think about this. Think about all the people who do sell specific categories on some of these live things. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think we could get it cheap enough where, I mean, you could talk about running out of action figures, right? <laughs> well, here's a way to not run out of action figures, right? So I th in the, uh, Amazon, and I could be speaking out of turn because I'm not an Amazon seller here, but there are some people like CDs that can sell CDs on Amazon, right? Yeah. So I have a lot of 118 CDs, and these are good. These are like Beatles, Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd. I mean, this isn't like Anne Murray, who's awesome, by the way. Um, Leroy probably likes Anne Murray. You like Anne, Anne Murray, Leroy? I don't even know who that is. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, it's like, okay, I could, I could leave. I'm looking at these things. I'm like, damn, there's some in here that are worth 15 bucks. But you know what? I'm going to have to go through this entire thing, scan every single one. And then I've got a pile of, you know, $4 CDs left or whatever. And like, then what do you do with that? And it's like, you know what? I'm just going to sell this whole thing, the good ones, to a CD person who might be able to sell them on Amazon and get good money for them. Or maybe they got a music show, store. Yeah. Or maybe they got an antique booth uh -huh. and they can sell comics for a buck a piece and they're getting 300 for 75 bucks. Or what, whatever the ca category is, there's got to be a way that we serve both interests and the people that I hear from all the time. That's what really got me going. It's like, okay. I know there's people who want to sell off because they literally have so much, like Chernock, like some of these mm -hmm. folks that could pick because they live in great great spots. And then there's some people who want to whine and complain. You know, I can't find anything at my thrift store. It's, you know, $25 for a polo shirt and whatever. And I'd complain too, don't get me wrong. But it's like we – because thrifting is different. Everybody can find – you know, you guys could go somewhere and find something everywhere. You say that all the time, and that's true. But could you – consistently be in that area and find enough it's hard and tim i know you live in a tougher area than say chernock right and yeah. you're really good at this and it still can be a struggle i'm sure so. absolutely i i it, it's, that's the thing is just like there's so many different ways of selling right now that the way that you buy is what's really important also like 
for for example, for me, like I've kind of changed my business model to selling everything more high dollar, less less mm -hmm. quantity, like you know, less quantity and more like money monetary mm -hmm. and so like for me it, now it's like but there are a lot of people who will live off of selling 20 dollar items but i can't i i because i my space is getting more and more limited where i can't i can't hold 20 dollar items for you know two months but there are other people mm -hmm. who that's part of their business model and they make a living mm -hmm. doing it so it's yep. almost like and you're it, it's like good karma too and everybody's happy. Everybody wins. Like I can, if well, I can hope. Buy that bulk for a good price, and I can make money off of it, and by selling it to somebody else who can make money off of it, like it's so, everybody is winning. It, hey, it, another it, thing that made me think of this was you and Chernock, and you're talking about taking the load to the auction house. I'm sure there was some stuff in there worth selling, right? We're oh, selling yeah. on eBay or oh, we're selling oh, yeah. whatever. And it's like, it gives another option. And I'm not asking people to come over here and be a buyer or be a seller. I'm trying to provide something that is good for me, hopefully, and good for the district marketplace. And it's also good for sellers. If this isn't good for sellers, I'll, I'll kill it. But I have a feeling it's going to be. If I guarantee you, if Chernock's on there selling a lot and you can't find stuff and you buy his lot, and do the work, you will make money, right? And that's kind of how I want to do it for, for, for people. I think that uh, I think that'll work, but it's just thought. And I know there's people around here that auction their stuff. They buy they buy from auction, you know, like Cat does and stuff. They buy from auction houses all over the place. They travel and they get it all, and they don't want it all. They got to figure out a way. So some of them are doing whatnot, and some of them, some people can't do what. Some people, it's hard. Some people don't want to put their face on, do that stuff. And so it gives you another option to take what you want, your niche out of those. Because some of those auctions, you guys know, you, you, you buy this whole thing. Well, think about it like this, too. It's like, think about all, you mentioned this briefly earlier, and I wanted to just touch on it one more time. Think about all of the live sellers there are right now, whether it's on, you know, districts, whatnot. You know YouTube, whatever, right? What the one of the biggest things that people complain about who can't, aren't necessarily successful are they can't get the inventory enough inventory at a good enough price to be successful as a live seller. It's not even like they don't want to live sell; they just literally can't compete. And you know, live selling is so much about you know niches. It, it's where it's like if you're a jewelry seller. And you want to live sell jewelry, you gotta have a lot of jewelry. So it's like we can we can almost as as sellers as full time resellers who are going to be selling wholesale in this market, we can almost provide these live sellers with the inventory that they're so desperately in need of in order to be a successful live seller. And I, I think that that's another way of looking at it. like yeah, there's going to be a lot of people who will sit down and they'll take that you know, a hundred comic book lot and they'll photograph every single comic book and they'll list every single comic book. Right. But there's also going to be people who are live comic book sellers who are going to take that lot. They're going to start their, each one of those comic books at a starting price. That's a little bit above what they paid for it and let it rock, you know, and make their money that way. So I, I just, for me, I feel like the, what, what is going to happen here with what Kevin is doing is it's expanding upon a little bit of everything that has been done before, right? Like, there's no need for mystery boxes anymore. There's no need to necessarily do high bid. There's no need to, you know, like, you're getting all of this ability to source in one place. And in a place where communication... And y'all are making this sound really good. I'm not... Oh, <laughs> where communication is going to be so, so heavy. Like, the, the, the ability to... It's not like you could go on eBay and and post a message on eBay and be like, I'm looking for a comic book lot, right? You can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you can't do that anywhere else on any selling platform, no. but you can do that on this selling platform and district. You can literally go into the chat and tell somebody I am looking for men's jeans. 
And Cernok yeah. is literally going to his basement, pull out 25 pairs of men's jeans, take a video, take the pictures, post it, send that link in the on, in search of chat. That person he already sold some over they there. like it and buy it. He already sold some over there. Did you know that? Oh no, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> he did. I'm not kidding. Yep. I beat me. He got the first sale. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, I, it's to me, it's just it, it's it's providing something that is and, and what no matter what we do here, content creation, right? The the biggest thing in content creation, and not everybody who listens to this creates content, right? But this rule of thumb in content creation can apply very much so in, in what is going to be happening here in this district. And so much of content creation is being able to provide value, right? Like people who watch content, they need to have value provided to them, whether it's in the form of information or entertainment. If you're not providing value, you're not, people aren't going to watch your content. And this is every, any sort of content that you can create, right? You have to be able to provide value. And what this marketplace and community is going to do is going to provide much needed value in the reselling community all in one place. And that is, that to me is the most important thing here. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I think reseller to reseller, this hasn't really been done yet. And I, I not, because not, even these not wholesalers, in a non scammy way for sure. And it's not <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying on a small scale, I think. But yeah, you, you're right. You're right. Uh, and that's why that's why I'm on this show, to be honest with you. And that's why I'm talking to you guys. And I really think there are a few people, some of those names down there. You know, Eric, you know Pinjo, right? And oh, you've seen oh Pinjo. God. You've he seen Pinjo. Crazy. I've sourced from whatnot. Pinjo multiple times. Yeah, he comes <laughs> on whatnot and he sells one offs. And it's like, man, I can make money off of these one-offs, right? But it takes him forever. He didn't have a huge audience, and he's got to ship to 30 different people and stuff. So you know what I did? I cut you out of the loop, Eric. I said, hey, Pinjo, next time you buy a storage unit or whatever, and you're going to go sell $40 things on whatnot for 4 bucks, why don't you just give me a call, put it in a box, and I'll give you eight, right? Put it all in a box. And this is the same idea. Now, I, I still want to do that with Pinjo. So, Joey, if you're listening. But, we love you. you know, you could do this. I don't want, like, death piles. It's not like I want you to throw all your stuff in a box. But you could have four bins and be like, okay, this is like I have a military bin, right? That I, it's like I like to sell military stuff from time to time or camo stuff or whatever. I'm sure Chernock comes across that stuff a lot. You showed us a bag right before we went on. But I, I just started putting it all in one thing, right? And I there was a $125 jacket. I pulled it out and I put it up on eBay, right? And I bought a whole bin. Matter of fact, it was right after you were at that sale at the 100, Tim. You missed it. So I bought that. I, I sold that one on there. And there's tons of 15 to $30 pieces. Mm -hmm. And I, I could go through there and pull out $30 pieces, I suppose. Or I could just sell 33 pieces off for 100 bucks. It's cheaper than something to buy at Goodwill. I sold my $125 jacket. And somebody who is sells that stuff all the time. That's what their store is. They can make some money on it. And I'm happy with that too. Like I think about like two like this, like postcards of <laughs> camera, right? Like for me, like I know that there's money in that stuff, but I don't, you know, you touched on this earlier. You got in two postcard sellers in your group here and they're always yeah. in here, I think. Right. So yeah, that, do perfect. you remember? Do you remember when I picked up those postcards at the 100 a year ago? Yeah. There's 5,000, six, there's tons of them. So I've been selling them off in like lots of 10 and 20, and I've sold a 1,000 of them. But how much time did that take me to do that? Exactly. You know what's going to be on this site? 4,000 postcards are going to be on this site, and I'm going to make my money on it, and the postcard person is going to one-off them things and make some money on it, right? That's the way it's going to work. And I don't have to – because that box is going to sit there for years. And some I got a person tub. would like to have it. I got a tub in the room next door yeah. <laughs> full of sheet music. And I there see people Post selling it. sheet music. And I'm like, man, I could do I might I should do this. And then I look, I open it up and I'm like, it's gonna take me a day and a half <laughs> to research. Cause you guys know I'm a black I'm, yeah. I'm a I'm a I'm a rabbit hole sort of guy. It's gonna take me a day and a half to research you're, you're all not the Leroy. sheet music. Sell it low and let I it go. Do it. Hey, dude, don't do that. 
no, no, I can't. But you're do it. gonna so do it in like, a lot. <laughs> exactly. But see, so now it's like I can I can just take that tub of sheet music and I can, you know, put it into one lot, and then somebody who somebody's gonna probably look at that and be like, Oh, this guy's an idiot, and then he's gonna, <laughs> they're gonna buy it and they're gonna make 10x their money. But the thing is, mm-hmm. is that like I, I'm creating space. I'm gener- I, I, I mean, I'm not making any money. It's dead money right there. Time. You know? You're so, creating. The it, biggest thing is you're creating time to get the most bang for what you are really, really good at, which is you know glass and cards and stuff like that. So yeah. So it's for me. I, I'm excited to. I mean, I got I got six bins of hats. You six. I mean, that's still Sternock. You know, Sternock has probably you know. Cernok could supply the lids across the country with hats. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, it's just, I don't know. For me, it, it, it's, I look at it too as a seller. So anybody who's watching this who is a serious full time reseller, I, I think that you got, this opens up another way of sourcing yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Because think about it, when we all go out sourcing, right? I'm like, you know, and not just us, but people in general, they're like, they source for certain things. I'm sourcing this for whatnot. I'm sourcing this for to list online. I'm sourcing this for my antique booth. You know, th- mm-hmm. there's certain ways that you're sourcing. So now it's like you've opened up as a seller, you've opened up another avenue of thought for, for picking. So like, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, because I'm generally not the type of guy like you. You guys have all been picking with me. I'm not the type of guy to be like, I'm much for everything, right? You know, so like if I do that, you know, it's. You I don't know, think I've like, ever heard you say that, Tim. I don't <laughs> think I've ever heard you say, how much so for like, the table? Like, yeah, so I'm a little, I'm a little bit more, for me, as a full time seller, serious full time seller, and somebody who I, I think most people in this industry will tell you is a very, you know, honest and reliable guy. Um, I, now I feel like a little bit more comfortable, like where I could be like, how much for this? Every you know what you could do, Tim? At 127. We're going to see Tim walk up with some ice. Yeah. How much for this whole we'll box? We'll see. Yeah. And then immediate, and the only reason he's going to do it is because we're going to go live on shopcommons.net immediately yeah. after. Matter of fact, maybe before he buys it, he'll go live. We, we yeah, Tim, yeah, go ahead. We might have to get get some WD forty for his wallet though. That thing is a little <laughs> creepy. <laughs> Chernock, I saw him lowball the lowball of lowballs I've ever seen in my life, and it was to one of my viewers. He's like, he was talking down these Doc Martens, man. He was like, they don't have shoelaces. Give me ten dollars <laughs> off. Like shoelaces are ten dollars. I, I bought I bought shoelaces for those and sold them already. <laughs> Even the DC, they may be ten dollars. They may be ten dollars. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. Hey, I, I got a quick like just a little quick thing. So once this thing's live it, on this panel, I mean, I know I know certain things. I guarantee we're probably gonna buy something because somebody's going to end up putting something that we like up there, right? The things that we like to mess with. Like that's, that's one of the things that I think about as well is if I can know, I mean, one of the reasons why I like to buy in bulk is because I know I can go and get 20, you know, I can go and get 30, I can go and get a table load and then I can cherry pick. And, and like for me, the process now is cherry pick what I want to sell that I'm going to take the time to actually list. And then the other stuff is I'm either going to live sell it or I'm gonna, it may end up in the yard, right? It may end up in the <laughs> yard sale that I do semi-annually. So, like, for you guys, can you see, like, so think about even in your reselling journey, if you, if you could be told, hey, you can buy something from somebody who's trustworthy, guarantee you're going to make money on this stuff, and you can get it delivered to your house, you ain't going to go anywhere, like, sign me up. <laughs> and uh, so I was thinking about this too. I think I was thinking about having sellers like in the description of the item, maybe even putting like what state they're in so that you can shop, you know, and maybe you're, you're like, oh, I live in that state right there. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe this person can cut me a deal on the shipping because it's right there and just have those open lines of communication. And then you can source from the same people multiple times if you're satisfied with it. There's so many ideas like that. I still have so many questions. As a matter of fact, I'm going to ask you some to get your thoughts on it. 
I, I want them to be like items, but like shoes. It's like, I don't know if, like, I'd love to sell off like maybe two of my tubs, but I got boots, I got shoes, I got kids' shoes, I got sandals. I don't know how much mixing we should do as far as me goes or allow people to do, or toys, like vintage toys. Is that too broad? Or do they need to all be like Marvel or something? I, I, I'm trying to figure out that part of the logistics of it. What do you think? I think if you niche, well, go ahead. What I was going to say is I think, okay, so think about curated stuff, just like Sarnock mentioned it earlier. Okay, it, the further you got to curate that stuff, I'll just tell you, that's time. Yep. Time is money. So mm -hmm. like for me, if, if I'm going to sell, like if I went in here and said, look, I'm going to sell you all – John Deere snapback hats. If I've got to go through a hundred hats to get 15 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. now you're going to pay more for those 15. Yeah. Than That's a good point. Going. Yeah. Like just like you would in anything else. Like if you're curating and saying, I want only vintage band tees. Well, that price is going to yeah. be up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 want the vintage tees, right? So not <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. I think, I think there needs though, to be a little bit of, you know, commonality between mm -hmm. it you know what i'm saying i don't think it has to be like exact but like kind of what you said like shoes boots kids i think you would need to do like hey here's a women's shoe lot mm -hmm. here's a here's a men's athletic right. sneaker lot here is yeah. a men's boot lot you know like right. something like that but if somebody had the ability to do like, here's jeans, they're all Levi's. That's yeah, going to yeah. be better for them. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and that's where you're going to, that's where you're going to have to. Now, listen, it's going to be a competition for the sellers as well. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like who's going to be able to curate something like that? You know what I'm saying? Right. So like, Hey, you know, like may, maybe the better the curated mm -hmm. items are, maybe the higher price you, you can get for it. Like, like OBX was saying, you know, hey, here's here's 15 John Deere hats. Well, I'm not going to sell those for two bucks a piece. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because you know, you know how how that's going to mm -hmm. go. But I'm not going to kill them. You know what I'm saying? I'm not mm -hmm. going to be like, hey, it's twenty dollars a hat because that's going <laughs> to. I want to stay around that twenty five to thirty percent. You know, of mm -hmm. eBay comps and stuff like that. But you know, I, I but I could see if it was more curated and, and higher value, where somebody might even pay. 40 50 percent and still do okay if it's high asp it's i think that's what's tough i thought about setting like all right it has to be 50 items or not and then i'm like wait a minute what if somebody wants to sell a dozen puffer starter jackets or something mm -hmm. you know i don't want to limit it by number or dollar amount but it does scare me a little bit because i don't want here's a vintage clothes lot and then have a, a woman's you know shoulder pad jacket along with a you know single stitch so i want to figure that out a little bit and that may take some time and communication with the buyers which is why i want to keep those buyers limited at the beginning because they and tim knows this tim knows this because he set that up in there if if you had to go back and redo one stop shop you know you'd probably put more parameters on certain things and once you have enough sellers in there doing it that way then the other sellers see it. The new ones who come on, like, okay, this is how you do it, right? Because I, I, I think, think I key. think some of the things that you're worried about are going to. I, I don't know how to, but they're going to not necessarily self-correct, but they're going to be self-handled because of the sellers that that are. But Tim, going there's to a lot of people that hate me. There's a lot of people that don't like me. They'll be like, oh, come on, pick or dude. Look at what he's doing. I bought this lot from him. I'm telling you. <laughs> That's why I'm worried. <laughs> but but I, I, just, I, I just think that, like, for me, like, if I'm selling something as a lot, right, I, and I look at this I with everything that I do, especially with shipping, right, I always ship things how if I were to buy something, how I would want it shipped to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I remember when, because I was on Shop Goodwill when nobody else was on there, and I was mm -hmm. killing it, right? Mm -hmm. But man, you know how many times I would order five, six bowls, Pyrex bowls, and they would show up to my doorstep in a million pieces. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when I'm selling wholesale, right? Like if you're a reseller and you're selling to other resellers, 
you, you got to know that you, A, like, you got to know that these people need to be able to make money, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's what, that's what we're doing. And like I said earlier, it's like the opportunity for us to make money and somebody else to make money is a win-win. So it's like, I don't want to put out a crappy lot with one really good item because A, that's going to mess up my reputation. B, a smart reseller is not going to buy it. You know what I'm saying? Like they're gonna look at it and be like, "What is Tim doing?" Like I don't want, I don't want to deal with this stuff that he didn't want to deal with. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I I think that most resellers who sign up to do this will understand what they're doing and what the service is that they're providing because it is an opportunity for sellers and buyers. And I think that that's the biggest selling point of this community marketplace that that Kevin is setting up. Yeah. Well, I, I think also too, you know, like, and Kevin, I talked about this too. It's like that vetting process, and that, and that we're gonna be seeing what they put up on there. So if someone puts up something crap, we're we'll like, hey, <laughs> there's a know, chat. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, hey, brother, this this lot is not gonna fly. So, mm -hmm. You might want to take that over to the other side. Like, <laughs> if we're going to, you know, police it like that, I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. open communication. It's honest, and it's like, hey, this is what we want to see. You know what I'm saying? Watch what we do, and then try to, you know, follow that. You know, so I I think I think with with kind of what we're going to do that slow rollout and having some really good items in the forefront to see. Y'all go buy something from Chernock. I'm sure he's got stuff listed right now. I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm telling you. you where he'd be selling over there, man. Like, well, well, I'm saying like, you're going to see what I do. So if you emulate something like that, you know what I'm saying? That, that may be a little more successful. And I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but you know, we have a, you know, uh, you know, during our Tuesday live shows listing and loafing, you know, I do these deal of the day. I try to give deals. I try to give steals, you know, to people. And I'll tell you this. Everyone that's bought something, I haven't had any complaints about it. Right. You know, like, Matter of fact, I'm, I think one of my requirements before I approve somebody for a seller is they have to watch this podcast. The whole thing. <laughs> I'm serious. Think about it. They've got, they've got, they get, if you watch this, you've got the idea. So if you've watched this already and you, you, you go over there and you apply and you say, I've watched the entire podcast to a one hour, two minutes and 56 seconds, um, you might get approved. <laughs> hey, that being said, one, one other thing that I, I did want to touch on a little bit, just because I know this can be a a point of contention that some people bring up, especially like, I mean, obviously Kevin, you have a pretty large following and you know, we know that there are people that, that bid. So like when you're running a live stream with your wholesale box and you're selling it on auction, let, let me just put this PSA out for everybody. <laughs> right? We can't control what someone pays for an item in an auction. Like mm -hmm. if they keep getting that bid button, they're going to pay more. So then if they were to go on later on and say, I bought this for a hundred dollars. Well, dude, I put it up for auction at five. So <laughs> I, I showed wrong, you every dude. item, right? Yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing too. So, so also know that be, be aware of that, that, you know, it is, I know that we've talked, uh, talked to like about putting out some buy it nows, but when we run an auction, there are some items that are just more popular than others. There are other people that bid because they can, and, and that's an auction. Like I go to the auction house all the time, and when yeah. I go to an auction and there's something I want, but you guys know me, I don't like to pay a whole lot for it, and I've got a ceiling. I've got something I've already wrote down that this is the most I can pay, and that's hey. all I'm going to pay. So. I envision it two ways. One is that's the that's the exact reason why I first started with these video buy it now listings because I didn't want I I didn't want somebody to pay more than I wanted them to pay for it. I wanted them to pay this price because I right. know it's worth this. But it is going to be a live selling site, and I think I think you're right about that. But I envision it like, hey, 
I don't care if you have one item to sell. If you want to pop on there live and sit there and go through this box of, you know, I don't know, just to take your pick of whatever it is, tools, hats, plush, whatever it is, and this giant lot of things, if you want to go through them and that's all you sell that day, and you could do it in 10 minutes as opposed to running a whatnot auction with 12 people showing up and you sold four things in an hour and a half and you ship it to four different people. Yep. I think that's appealing to some folks. And so the live, I could see myself popping on live and having one lot like, hey, I just bought this giant record collection. I don't even want to go through it other than here you go. Here's everything that's in it and I'm going to triple my money and you're going to quadruple your money. That's the way I see it for some yeah. folks. You don't have to have a show. You might have one lot of stuff you want to get rid of and get yeah. on there and go and you're do it. Something in detail and it's 50 items. I mean, it's going to take you 20, 30 minutes to do it, really. You know, so yeah. it makes Depends sense. on what the item is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, you know me. I yeah. like to show every angle of very No, I know. I was going to criticize you for it. And taste. I've fallen asleep to many things before the auction ever started, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Not with He's me. Here. No way you can fall asleep to me. He's here on knickknacks running this stuff. We ran it pretty quick, but I had to force him. I'm like, all right, I just hit <laughs> He's showing it and doing whatever. I hit that button. He's like, he, there's 12 hour live doing? streams. Tim would be like, I think towards the end, he's like, I got this card. It's oh, like, yeah. <laughs> the, those 12 hour streams <laughs> definitely kick my butt a few times. <laughs> oh, my right, goodness. Got, so, so, listen, I, I get what everybody's saying. I'm listening to all this stuff. And this is the Reseller Information Network. There are a lot of beginners. Subscribe. Here. There's a, there's a lot of re beginners here, and I'm going to tell you guys. Okay, sometimes you're going to the thrift shop. You're spending twenty. You're spending ten. You're spending five. Take that month off. Take better pitches. Spend four hundred dollars, and buy something off of this this site. It doesn't have to be the site that Kevin's talking about. Buy something in bulk. Now you have now you have four hundred items. It's Kevin. Uh, Eric knows if you watch me. Okay, Eric is the only one who's really thrifted with me the most in my whole life. Okay, I don't buy one thing. I'm buying five. I'm buying twenty. I'm spending five. You know, I I don't. I, I tell them I'm going on auction, and my van's full. Okay, people say, Oh, how often do you thrift? <laughs> Hundreds every other month because I'm mm -hmm. spending five hundred dollars and I'm buying two thousand items. Mm -hmm. so when you see me selling something for three dollars, I paid ten cents for it. Hey, Leroy, you reminded me of something, and this is me, and this is me who's been reselling forever. I I've all I've never really done the whole set. I see these gurus on on places and whatever, and they're getting these supplies. They're selling it all. I don't know how to do this stuff. I don't know that I want to know how to do this stuff. I don't know, you know, they get these contracts with wholesales and official. I don't know how to do all that stuff, but I know how to buy from other resellers, and I mm -hmm. think that this could provide for normal f folks out there like us an opportunity to to do that where some of us don't know. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know how to make no. these contracts. Right. So listen, listen. I'll, I'll tell you this. It, 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 I think this is going to work because a lot of those big wholesalers that do vintage clothing or like you know, like the, the uh, there's a there's literally like what, what it's called like your your buy entry. Mm -hmm. Like you literally got to spend like there's a place in Atlanta ten grand or whatever. Yeah, you got to spend. Yeah. Like, that you got to spend two grand to even step into the door. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got you got to have two grand to be spent there, to be even like to even be invited, and and, and that's that's on the low end. Like you said, there's some places that are five, ten grand. There, listen, a lot of people that we're you know like we're selling to and other resellers, they ain't got that money. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You know, right now if you said, hey bro, I can I can take you to this 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 warehouse, five grand to buy. I'm like, I can't, I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
But like, Which, by the way, brings up a point. eBay, if you've seen this, this is a topic of a video of mine. eBay, I've seen this more than I've seen it in the past. eBay pushing these small business things and these ads. Have you seen that stuff on the platform? Which, yeah. whatever, eBay can do what it wants. It kind of drives me nuts because I'm like, man, we really strapping these people with debt to, to go out and make a deal like that with uncertainty. There's so much money sitting around a lot of us resellers with stuff that we're not getting to. Maybe you do have an opportunity and you can come on here and sell a few big, and now you got at 500 bucks or something to, yeah, to, to invest in something you want to do. That's what I'm saying. It's not that, it's not that, it's not unattainable to get product. You don't, you know, I'm not going to be like, Hey, to come to the, the basement, you got to spend a grand. Like no. <laughs> now, now I did have a dude say like, what? I got to spend like a grand to come over. I'm like, it's not a bad idea, but you know, <laughs> it's not a bad idea. I, I can't, but I can't say that. But I think where kind of we're heading though, it's going to give those opportunities to other people instead of you know they can't come up with two grand, but they maybe could be up they can come up with seventy five dollars or a hundred dollars for a bunch of products that they can you know instead of like hey I'll sell you a bale, you know that's that's. Mm -hmm. like, you know, 800 pieces well, that's mm -hmm. to bury them but if i can do hey here's 50 pieces well that that could you know hey that'll that'll keep me going for uh, two weeks or something like that yeah. so mm -hmm. something like that i think it's more in bite sizes that we're gonna offer than a hey well here's a here's a whole pallet of returned goods from home depot or Lowe's, which is you know again that's a good investment but you're still paying 800 to a thousand dollars for something like that, for a Gaylord like that, versus yeah. something like we we may be able to provide, like, hey, bro, here's a hundred ties for fifty bucks. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Fifty cent ties, but you mm -hmm. know you, you you get a lot, so you can you, you know, but you don't get too much that it buries you, but you get enough to be like, all right, this is bite sized pieces. I can bite this off in a week or two weeks, and then go back. Mm -hmm. and be like, all right, what else can you know that that was successful. What else is there? Yeah, I like it. The more I hear you guys talk about this idea, it makes me feel good. I, I'm glad I, I'm glad I'm not introducing this on the Trash to Cash podcast. I would have never got out, and it would have been slammed six ways from Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, how long does this normally go? Is this an hour and a half show yeah, or an we're hour? Good. No, we're good. We're uh, we're close. <laughs> we're close. Oh, I don't need to get off. You guys are telling me how great this is. I just was wondering. That's <laughs> all right. <laughs> You had some was there anything questions? else that you want to touch yeah, on? About questions? Well, I'll just say that I, I I did bring this to you guys. I've been talking to you about it behind the scenes, and I appreciate you. I'd love for you all. And, and Chernock, we've already talked. Um, uh, there's going to be a Chernock's Connection category, <laughs> y'all. If you want to give the first shot, give it to him. And I'd love to see Tim list, list those uh, music sheets over there. And Eric, I'm sure, can come up with something. I've seen his place. But... Um, I, I just it's it's shopcommons.net and if you've never if you're what you know if you're on one of the other districts you know come on over I am looking for sellers that doesn't mean I'm promising everybody's gonna get in but like I said if you've watched this video and you tell me that you're probably you've got a good enough understanding to at least give it a go and uh, I'm gonna limit those sellers so at least at the beginning, because I don't want to turn into whatnot, whatever, where they're recruiting. You know, I, I want there to be a good balance, and I don't know where that is, because I don't know how many people out there can sustain putting out this kind of um, inventory for that price unless it fits their model, and I don't know how many buyers there are, and there may be more in the wintertime, because I don't. there's no sourcing around here in the wintertime unless you make your own sourcing, right? And so it, it might depend on season and, and where you're at and what you have financially, too, but... I would, I would love it and go over and follow these sellers. And I think Tim, now you're on so many different sites. If they follow you, they'll get alerts on different sites and stuff. Is that right? I'm, I'm, I'm a few, few followers away from to the 200 mark on, on district. All right, go follow Tim, and of I course, did, go follow Chernock and all these I, 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 district. And and because I am a hardcore believer in what what it is. And, you know, it's to have this opportunity, like I wouldn't, I would never, I'm not a yes guy, right? So like when Kevin comes to me with something, he knows that I'm going to tell him straight up what I think and how I feel. But I, I really think that this. What do you think about my box selection, Tim? 
Well, I don't like your box selection. You have no <laughs> ten by eight by sixes. It was hell. It was hell, absolute hell. But I made it work because I love it. Right? <laughs> I'm going to bring. I'm bringing ten by eight by sixes. No question about it. On one twenty seven, my car is going to be like a, a motor, motor mobile shipping unit when we hit the road. Because I'm on the road for like two weeks, basically by myself. I know. You know, so it's going to be it's going to be a fun time. But no, I just I really think that, you know, I'm a big believer in districts because of the community base that it it's solely focused on. Like that's something that you cannot get on any other platform, hands down. Right. And I think that yeah. these marketplaces, whether it's one stop shop, dip ditch and, and the new one right now that we've been talking about for an hour and 15 minutes, if you guys aren't. You know, already over there. Get over there right now. You'll find a link in the description below of this video, obviously. But did you I, see? There's a carnivorous plant. Okay, okay. Now? I was going to talk about this <laughs> afterwards, right? I watched it. So Ivan hit me up, and he's like, he's like, um, if anybody knows any gardeners, you know, tune in. And like, I'm like, damn, you should have told me. I would have told my wife. And so and you know, have mosquito like, eating plants. That's I'm a I'm curious doing. guy, right? Like I love to learn, bro. I hopped in that live and I was like, "What in God's name is going on?" This dude is live from a greenhouse, and there is like a hundred people in there, and he's got this plant that's like this big, and it looks like something from a, the Ninja Turtles video game, right? Little shop of horse. Little shop of horse, bro. The one plant sold for $223. He sold seeds, seeds for $400 plus. I'm like, what am I doing with my life? What am I doing with my life? But it, just goes, it just goes to show you that A, where there's a will, there's a way. B, that there are buyers for everything out there. Okay? So it, it's... To have this opportunity, it fills a void that I think is in a big void in the reseller industry. When you're by you know being able to have these wholesale opportunities from people that you trust and having such transparency, communication, this is just something you're not going to find anywhere else. And why, that is why I am a big believer in, in, in this project. Yeah. And shipping is easier over there. You could not do this on whatnot. You could, but I mean. You know how you get killed on that massive on those big packages and stuff and the communication. That's why this is the platform to do it on. I mean, we've all shipped. We've all shipped. I mean, I think you know, Sarnox shipped some crazy things on 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 district. We've all shipped a lot on district. I mean, I I think I've sold in total. I've sold seven hundred and sixty five items on district. Jeez. So like, I got you beat, dude. I've sold 768. Oh, you got me beat by three. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it's the shipping is, like I said, like I don't just tell people things to tell people things. I only tell people things that I really believe in. And you guys know that because you can hear the passion in my voice. And this is something that I believe in. I believe in district since the first time it came to us. And, yes, and now what Kevin's doing is it's, it's going to be big. It's going to be really, really good. And it's going to be a good Fresh. karma thing. Good karma thing. I hope so. Well, thank y'all for letting me on. If there's oh, anything man. else you want, let me know. Bro, you I know, I know what, you actually, you know what? What do I want? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just like, I'm, 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 I'll I'm, buy you I'm, dinner at 127. I'm, I'm curious. No, 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 no. Listen, I'm, I'm trying not to eat crazy because I go on these road trip things with you guys and I go on these. These Nobody's vapes. forcing the donuts and, like, in your mouth, Tim. What's that? Nobody's forcing the donuts down your throat. <laughs> I came back from North Carolina and from Airbnb, and I put on like ten pounds, dude. I put on ten pounds the first two days. I had so much fried tuna and hush puppies <laughs> and fried soft shell crabs and fried <laughs> shrimp, dude. I showed, I showed him how to eat crabs way easier, man. There ain't no need for all that picking, bro. You just drop it in a deep fryer let her eat. I don't like them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Hey, uh, we do appreciate uh, you guys for coming through. It's good to see Leroy. Leroy, good to see you, brother. Yeah, man. I'm, I can't I, wait till you're back for good. Yeah, this is just a freak, a freak accident. Um, 
I well, couldn't let Eric down. I couldn't let um, Kevin down. Hey, I, I went on your Buck Mountain show to fill in for you, too. Do you see that? <laughs> so my connection so bad. I went on to your Buck Mountain show. I took your place. Oh, you don't That's want to funny. say it, huh? You're it's, faking it. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> we were and I have matching shirts on today too. Yeah, um, you guys color coordinate. Yeah, but, we but did, I, I, do, I I do want I do want to say, um, Kevin, we we all appreciate you. Um, in my heart, you're the Godfather. Um, <laughs> uh, no, listen, let me talk. You are the Godfather of, of of what I have in my in my society as a reseller. I respect you. I think you're a great man, and I would I, I would never do anything to try to upset you. And Eric as well. I I, I respect Eric. Sonak and Tim, man. <laughs> Chris, that's just like a headache. That's like a headache uh, you get it while you take a ty- Tyrannol, you know. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see you again, man. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping. That I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do um, 127. I would love to, but we'll see. But I got some well, let me there. tell you. Maybe we'll eat lunch or something. I'm going to go to Florida twice this this fall and winter. So maybe I can. Uh, I drive nearby there, so we'll come by. Come see the new warehouse. <clears throat> yeah, sounds you know, like a plan. But but I appreciate everybody and guys. Don't like I said. For me, the main part of this is we we do have a lot of re- new resellers. If you have to scale back a little bit to buy. A three hundred dollar lot that you that you don't normally spend that much at one time. Just think about it. Just do your math because you might be able to get some really good lots on this on this district site that is going to help you, and you won't be chasing stuff. Mm-hmm. Sit back for a second, save that three hundred dollars, and then once you got that going. Every time there's a good lot that comes on that's $250, $300, $100, you'll be able to grab it without thinking instead of spending $23 every time you go to a thrift store and you don't know if it's going to sell. All right. Amen, brother. Chernock, I know he's going to provide some deals. Listen, that's what I was just going to say. I'm gearing up. If you're watching this video, if you're – if you're a buyer, if you're a clothing buyer, if you're a shoe buyer, a hat buyer, I got you. Well, you're gonna, hey, you're gonna jump serious. in there before the masses, y'all, because it's not getting posted in the district till Wednesday, but I just told you shopcommons.net. You can go over there and buy something before anybody gets there. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't be loading it up. I'm going to be loading it up. So. Hey, Don't I love you there. guys, man. You guys are awesome. I'm signing out. All right, unless you got, unless you need me to stay, Eric, no, I'll stay till no, you. You, you. We're sum signing it up. out now. <laughs> All right. Am I, is my this is my cue because I'm on the screen. All right, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you guys and gals as always. We appreciate all the love and all the support. Do not forget to go over to shopcommons.net. Get your early access. <laughs> Do not forget to check out all the links in the description below. Come on by One Stop Shop. Say hello. Uh, we always appreciate all the comments in the comment section of the YouTube uh, shows that we put out. So please, if you have any questions, comments, uh, feedback, anything, make sure you guys leave those comments in the comment section of this video. Uh, we will get to you. And uh, make sure you guys check us out on Tuesday. Listen, loafing. But most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to tell a friend to tell a friend about R I N Risa. Information network.